Hey, guess what? Holidays are right around the corner, and you probably have no idea what to buy your loved ones. Be sure to visit hellatipsy.biz or DM hellatipsy1 on IG to place an order for a gift that anyone would absolutely love. From hoodies that are perfect for the winter to tanks and tees that you can wear whenever you feel like it. Hella Tipsy is your source for clothing, and the best part about them is that they're from right here in Seattle, Washington. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is the Hip Hop Seattle Podcast. We are on episode 32. 32. Man, uh, it's your boy Kelnati. It's your boy Miss I Def, Henry 100K. We got two special guests today. Double header today, man. Got Kodak the Great. BC Trey in the building. Round of applause. Mm-hmm. Appreciate good, you good, guys good. coming through to the program, man. Two talented guys. So you 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 mainly rap. You sing on the side as well. Uh, it's kind of experimenting kinda, it's, with it. Yeah, it's a mixture. I feel you. And then you you sing. Do you rap too, or you? No, nah, I'll sing. All yeah, singing. I'll okay. Sing. <laughs> and how long you guys been doing this for? Like, I mean, I mean, individually, I suppose you guys are both single uh, solo artists, correct? Mm, yeah, so, okay, yeah. So how long you been doing music, bro? About ten years. Ten years. Okay. Yeah. And so of that 10, how many would you say you took it like completely professionally or really just you're going head in on it? Like, this is my life. I mean, that's always been the goal. Always been like the goal. Since I was young. Work. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's taking a, a different path probably early this year. Okay. When it got way more serious. Okay. So, yeah. And for you, bro? Uh, I've been going for like six months. Six, six months? months. Yeah. <laughs> so what got you into music, man? Uh, I mean, I always kind of like been singing since I was little, but I never okay. actually like took it serious until I know I can do this, like move how I want to do and like Bird. sing about the things I want to sing about. Okay. Mm-hmm. So was it like a choir situation, or how'd you get into singing as a? It wasn't no choir. I, I never been in a choir. I just just singing ever since I was little. Every time I used to go, some of my moms were like, "You can sing, sing, uh-huh. sing, baby, sing." sing. So I just kind of natural born. You ever talent. do any of those like covers you see online and stuff? You ever try singing another person's song? Like, I didn't like vocals. posted like videos on like Instagram, social media of me singing, but I ain't never like do like no covers or nothing. No covers or anything. Uh-huh. That's what's up. Damn. So six months, bro. Yeah, six and months. so ten years, bro. So you, so at this point now. You've put out a lot of content. Have you been doing shows and all that as well? For sure. Okay, for sure. Almost so, every weekend. Almost every, every weekend. weekend. Almost every weekend. Damn, when did you get into doing shows? Like how how for how long uh, in your career were you before you started like taking it to the stage, like being confident uh, with the music? My first open mic was March of this year. March, March of, this of this year. year. Wow, it's amazing. That, I began bro. booked. Oh wow. So, yeah. so if you look at any like videos online for reference, what do you look to for like advice as far as stage performance? Or you just go out there and you just figure it out just, and just I just do my thing. Just right? do your thing. Yeah, okay. it's, it, it's something I'm passionate about. So, you know, when I get up there, I know I feel like I'm supposed to be here. Mm, so that's okay. how I go about it. That's a blessing, man. So how many projects have you put out so far? A lot? Hella mm-hmm. shit? Hella shit. You got the album out already? Have you done your debut album yet? My debut, yeah. Okay, what Early. was the name of that one? Gump Guy 3. Okay. The first two were mixtapes. Mix it was tapes. like on some uh, premature, like some young stuff. Okay. But yeah, so Gump Guy 3. Okay. Yeah. And how'd you come in the game? Did you come in with like a single? Like what would like the month uh, one, bro? Like take us down. Month one, I uh, started. I started like dropping. Like first, I was like telling people, you know, like I'm actually about to start doing music. Okay. Then I started like doing singles at a time. So like, I for me, I was like, I'm not gonna say I was nervous, but I'm like, damn, like I don't want to be like one of the people like that's posting the same thing like over and over again. Which I mean, mm-hmm. it's cool to promote. Yeah. But like I don't want to like over infatuate like my page with like the same thing, same, same content. So I kinda mm-hmm. like just go went like single by single. Okay. Every month. Then I just dropped the E P probably like been out for like a month, like a month now. What was the name of the E P? Tiny Love. Tiny yeah, Love. Tiny Love. <laughs> so what was the reception from the single, the first single you put the out? First one, yeah, yeah, the first crazy, one? It went crazy. So I was like, damn, okay, like Word. I think I'm like yeah, and the first one that I actually dropped was featuring him. It's a song called Matcher, yeah. Okay. The one of the first one I was supposed to post called Realest One, but I was waiting on a feature to get back. Okay. So he was the first one I actually dropped. It's called Match. He just went crazy. So I'm like, all right, yeah, like it's time. Do you have anybody that when you told him you're going to, when you were telling people that you're going to start singing, did you have anybody that was kind of like, man, what, what, what oh, was nah, this shit, bro? <laughs> and then you drop your record and they were like, oh, man. Nah, they were like, finally, they were like, damn, like we've been waiting. Like, That's yeah. dope, bro. That's <laughs> real dope. Yeah. Six months in the game, ten years, man. Mm-hmm. So as far as like, what are you guys working on right now? I know you guys are working on. Re- are you guys currently working on records together too? We, we like, got like some like some. We got some stuff in the ball. We just it ain't. Word. Yeah. Do you guys look to each other for inspiration in certain sorts? Like, how do you guys move when you guys are together? At least we, so, we just be cool. We be cool. Like, like, it ain't really brother. a music thing like that between yeah, you. Yeah. Like, you guys just two artists kicking it, or yeah, no, that's my bro. Like okay. outside music. Yeah. Okay, yeah. word. When we first were kicking, it was like outside music. So yeah. okay, yeah. But when we found out like, that scene, he was trying to get me to record something. But I wasn't really like a writer, writer like that. So I was like, man, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm just, uh-huh. I, I wasn't ready yet. So I was just like, I was just waiting on me myself. So I was I like, yeah. 
I hear I hear a little culture, man. Are you where do you guys grow up? I'm from Louisiana. Louisiana, yeah. born and raised? Yeah, Baton Rouge. That's what's I moved something. to Atlanta for like two years, and then okay. I came here. Yeah. At what age did you move to Atlanta and then move here? Like, was that uh, later 18, in your life? Or? I, I moved to Atlanta at 18, then I graduated down there, and uh, okay. I went to, to college down there for a year, and then I came down here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what's up. And what about you, bro? My grandma, Alabama, born and raised. Born and raised. That's and when did, you, when, did you, when did you come over here to the West Coast, about, PNW? About three years ago. Three, three years, years ago? Yeah. And what was your initial thought of coming into Seattle, like knowing that you lived your life in a whole other? I mean, it's completely different if you want to think about, like, yeah. you know, Alabama and you know, man, Seattle's just a very it's interesting just, fucking the way place. The people, man. Yeah, people, it's a really interesting place. What was your like, like when you got first got here? For me, man, it was a, a breath of fresh air. Wow, okay. like really? where I'm from, it ain't it ain't that much to do, mm-hmm. and it's a whole lot to do here. Is there a scene for you guys oh, on yeah. your on your side, Louisiana? Yeah, there's. How about Alabama? Is there like a rap scene or is there a singing st- like R and B? Like it is, but you'll never know. Wow, okay. mm. it's, it's, really it's, it's a point. it's a crab in a bucket. Damn man, you'll never know. So you felt like we like rapping in circles out there, feeling like you were everything that Pretty you were right. doing, people weren't fucking with it or just not seeing it, or you didn't feel like they weren't seeing it. They weren't it's seeing a certain it. scene out there that I didn't fit the criteria for. Oh, okay, so you know. So you kind of, did you figure that out over time, or was it one of those things where it's like, I just really got to make a change? I knew that off the bat. Off the bat. I just ain't have no mm-hmm. no exit way no exit from way. leaving there. Mm-hmm. Okay. What was the what was the initial, was it a family thing that you guys lived for, or like, when you guys came up here? Not to get in too deep. You know, business. Like, oh, just business. You said okay. that business. Okay. Yeah. So in hindsight, you, you were grateful for the move? Or like, of course. Yeah. And how about you, bro? Yeah, mine was like the same situation. I mean, Louisiana, you got people... Everybody in Louisiana rap, to be honest, but you got a few people that sing, but it's like, I believe in quality over quantity, like, everything in me. That's why I kind of, when I first thought I was dropping singles, I didn't want to, like, flush a whole bunch of stuff out, because I got some songs that's like, I didn't feel like that was good enough, but I'll post, like, a snippet on Instagram, and it just go crazy, and I'll be mm-hmm. like, damn, sorry, I'm going to put it out anyway. Wow. Yeah, so, like, it's just... For me, I came. That was kind of like on the same thing, like on some business thing, kind of like you know, ex away, you know, fresh. But I wasn't. I wasn't even planning on doing music. I was just planning on you know coming and doing school and just mm-hmm. doing like the regular nine to five. But as I was figuring things out, I'm like, damn, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. I kind of become a passion for you now. Like it's it, been singing, always been like a passion. I got yeah. like this little thing when I was eight years old. It was like, what you want to be when you grow up? I was like singer. Okay. So like it's always been a passion. It's always something I've been wanting to do, but it was like I didn't have the means to do it. Mm-hmm. Now I have to I have the, the means to do it And because I'm grown I can do it Like whatever I want to However I want to do it So it's like yeah Way to put it man. Mm-hmm. Damn Y'all doing your thing bro So like uh, you, Are you working on Putting out another Like an album Or what's your like, If you look at Like 2020 coming We're about to start A whole new decade really And I mean If you really think about it Like it's a, almost A whole new mentality Because if you think about it, Every 10 years The music The music uh, industry It changes It makes a shift If you just think it From 2000 to 2010 and then from 2010 to where we are now, mm-hmm. do you think that you know the shit that you guys are doing musically now? Are you going to continue that? Or are you also going to be trying to like figure out what's the next shit that people going to be on? I think for me, uh, most of my my music is about like stuff I go through, or, like and then people relate to like the things that I go through because like I got a song called like Dear First Love, it's like my top song right now, and I got like it's just a whole bunch of personal stuff. So I feel like right. you know like stuff like that sticks around because it's timeless. Like, yeah, 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 it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't really change. So I think I'm gonna like kind of stay where I'm at. Mm-hmm. I just dropped another song yesterday, actually. So it's like, okay. it's my. I, I said it's gonna be my last song of like twenty or uh, twenty nineteen. We'll mm-hmm. see. But I think twenty twenty. I think it's gonna happen. Like I think I'm gonna make it happen. Like, okay. Yeah. You ever look at people like Chris Brown or just certain artists that also have to like dab into the you know the EDM shit? You hear a lot of R and B singers like I can't. I feel like I can't put out straight R and B songs because everybody wants to dance to shit. And sometimes mm-hmm. uh, it shifts because it used to just be we want to hear these love songs, mm-hmm. serenade the woman, you know. And now people want that kind of, but they also want the you know clubs and yeah, dancing yeah, and yeah. upbeat tempo shit. Yeah. Do you ever have that pressure? I mean, I get like people tell me like you need a club and you need a club and so I like I mean like I make like I got like six songs, but for me it's about when I write. I got, I got to like the, the, cuz I'm not really like in touch with my emotions like 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 on the outskirts like I'm talking to somebody like I, I can't like express my feelings but okay. if I hear a beat then I can tap into my emotions that's like the only time I can mm. so I feel like that's how I express myself like mm-hmm. when I'm like writing so for me it's just Sorry. I'm gonna sing about what I'm going through or like what's been going on in my head or what's happened like when I was younger mm-hmm. and you know what happens happens if I hear a beat and I'm like okay I can I can do something you know, this probably be something to play in the club or something and then I you know I go in and record on it but I'm not really worried about stuff like that that's what's up not chasing the hit yeah not I'm chasing not chasing the hit mm-hmm. so when people listen to your music Kodak what's one thing that people will realize right off the bat when they listen into your joints uniqueness uniqueness unique 
Okay. Every song on any one of my tapes sounds different than the other one. Mm. None of them sound the same. Wow. Is that something that you grew into, or is that something that you just always felt in your heart? You just want to always give somebody something fresh and new, and they invest time into you, or how does the thought process go with that? I think I've always been like that, man. It, mm-hmm. Cause I like I don't really like listening to other people. I listen to my bro, but mm. I don't like listening to other people. And I like listening to myself. I like that. But I know if I hear myself and I, I do the same style, mm. I'm gonna get tired of it. Mm. So that's I number one. Myself. Yeah. I'm. I, I put myself in a fan's place. So that's how I go about it when I do it, man. That's, that's a smart. Good way, yeah. Man. So you feel like, man, you gotta. So, like, what's your fan base like? What do you try to tap into? You be, do you be talking to your fans through social media? Like, how do you engage with your your your, your people? Unless you, you know, obviously a show they right there watching yeah. you. But like, aside from that, pretty much social media. Social media. And I'm stuff? very, I'm very approachable. Okay. By anybody, if anybody, if you ask anybody, I'm very approachable. Mm-hmm. It's not. I answer. You know how those people be having like a lot of unread messages? Yeah. I read all of them. You read all of them and respond to them. Hey, so. That's love, bro. That's yeah. real shit. Yeah, what about you? So, like, what about you? What's your social media presence like, bro? Like, my so it's pretty, it's pretty big. Like, as far as I had, a, I had a video I went viral. It was like a little snippet I posted in the studio. It was mm-hmm. about a, uh, I made a song about like a, a baby I had that wasn't mine. So it was like, damn, like people was like, damn, like this shit hard. Man, I always see that shit in interviews yeah, where they're like, yeah, yo, yeah. I posted the video, just went viral. How, like, what did you do though when you posted? So, you so, tagging so, it? Like, who nah, are you sending so, so it to? So this video uh, originally when I posted, it went crazy on my page. But then I posted a video. Uh, it went on say cheese. Oh mm-hmm. shit! Okay, and, you know, I see like. A lot of videos, like when they go and say cheese, they get like you know, like five thousand, well, six thousand. Yeah, and yeah, then that's this video fun. got like seventy thousand views, and I got like probably like two thousand, three thousand followers in like two days. That's wow. amazing. Seventy. Bro. Yeah, add it up. So you that's, had some people hitting you up too, trying to find your music and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, they was hitting. So it was like, I just, for me, even like before then, I still had like my social media presence was still okay, so yeah. I still reply to everybody. But then you got like. When you got like a hundred DMs and you stay on normal life, so it's like, all right. I reply to people like day by day, like, yeah. yo, appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. That so, must have felt yeah. good though, right? Just oh, have yeah, some little did, bit of validation yeah, for yeah, your hard reaction. work. I'm like, that's damn, dope. That shit crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, it felt good. Can you pinpoint something in your career, Kodak, that you felt like, yeah, man, I'm really doing this right now and I'm I'm proud of myself. This is a this is an accomplishment that I not necessarily was set out to do, but I can look at this accomplishment and and see like, yeah, I'm I'm really doing my shit with my music. Uh probably after I dropped um the video for Chico, okay, like my um my biggest single Chico. After I dropped that video, and when I got people coming up to me, mm-hmm. they know who I am. They know me outside of my real name. Okay, back home I'm still my real. That's ten ten years doing music in my my hometown, mm-hmm. and I'm still my real name. But out here, I'm with I, my brand that I built. Yeah, yeah. So that was like a turning point for me, man. It was like, cause I you know in ten years I've I've given up. Probably on the inside, I haven't told yeah. anybody. Yeah, but I've given up a few it's times. Hard. It's hard, yeah. And for that to just open more doors for me, mm-hmm. man, that was that was a big turning point for me. That's wow, a blessing. So that's the kind of stuff that you guys bring in your music as well. I mean, you're empowering other people and all that. It's for like sure. always. You guys have a, so you have a brand. Like, what is the name of the? Uh, is it you have something that you rap like you know imprint or just some sort of like you know? So uh, or is it just. My singing name is BC Trey. BC stands for Bread Chaser. But I don't okay. never really tell nobody. Like, okay. I just kind of let people, you know, Exclusive whatever they shit. think. Out, yeah. I be like, whatever they think, I just let them go with it. Yeah. But it's like, it's a family thing. So it's, it's like, I got thing. like other cousins, it's like, they rap or they just like, this is like our family. So it's like mm-hmm. BC Trey, BCJ. And mm-hmm. we just, you know. That's dope. Yeah. How'd you get your name? How'd you come? How'd you become Kodak? Great, bro. I mean, I originally, I got a name for my brother. Okay. I used to take a lot of selfies when I was younger. <laughs> so you called me Kodak. Mm-hmm. But I put more meaning to it as I started doing more music and stuff. Mm-hmm. So like Kodak, K O D A C, Killer of Demons and Controversy. Okay. Kill all That's demons and controversy. Yeah, Killer of Demons and Controversy. You know Killer how Drake demons. Drake like do right and kill everything. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's my favorite rapper. So I just I just threw that in there. Yeah. Okay. What That's do you dope. like about Drake? What does he bring to the table? I mean diversity. Diversity. He, he can touch. I think this man just dropped a, a um, what's the uh. Like he's, right? he's, he's speaking in, in Spanish yeah. and stuff. Oh yeah, oh, bro. Yeah. Like, he's doing shit like that too. Yeah, Brazilian yeah. record. I think. Yeah, yeah. He has that one. He has an actual Spanish record too. Wasn't he singing on that one? What's his name, man? The, man with the grill and everything. House with diamonds and shit. Crazy. I don't know why he's hella popular. He's like Travis Scott. He's like a Latin mm-hmm. Travis Scott. Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. Yeah. He had that record with him. Yeah, he's doing all type of shit. Yeah, that bro. man, a cold dealer. Yeah. Can you do some shit like that? Do some Spanish, like learn that shit and be able to sing or rap in another band's probably, language? Probably not. Crazy as hell, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers is doing that too. Did you guys catch the uh, Rhythm and Flow? Or was that what the name of it on Netflix? Mm-hmm. Y'all watch that? I'm still on the first season. Yeah, yeah. Man, what, did they have a second season already? Is it? I already watched it. I watched the whole first one, but there was a lot of pointers. I was bringing it up just because there's a lot of pointers on. There's a lot of things that we know about kind of, but not like like the time constraints that, that people give you. Like 
you got to come up with this song. I don't know if it's really like that, but I'm assuming that, you know, the higher you get, they're going to expect you to write a song, do the video the next day or whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? Yeah, did, yeah. You, did you pick, I mean, you said you watched it, right? Did you pick up any pointers on like, the, like oh, yeah, I'm going to try doing it this way? or No, I don't, I don't like doing Not at all? Like other people do. Okay. Uh, Just mm-hmm. for entertainment? Mm-hmm. Okay, I feel you on that shit. What about you, Cal? Did you, did you get to cast, uh, the Netflix joint? Yeah, I watched it. It was cool. How'd you, you didn't fuck with it that much? It was like, eh. I don't know. I don't really like shows like that. Yeah, um, I, will, yeah. I don't like really watch TV like that. like that. I feel that. The only reason that I really, not the only reason, but the reason why I watched it is just because of the interview I watched before T.I. was like, I only joined it because it wasn't structured like American Idol where they got the contractual obligations and all this type of shit. Mm-hmm. It's really just like these guys have to show off their talent and then they win the 250 and walk away. Mm-hmm. Little did I know, though, there was some inside shit like the D-Smoke dude. He had, you know, he's he won, right? Yeah. But he's Sir's brother from TDE and TDE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir's brother? So it's just like, in my theory, conspiracy theory right now is that, is that yeah, no, that's, wow. that's 100% real life. That's his actual blood brother. That's if you go wild. to the Instagram right now, they have a picture together. And they so look why exactly was he in that like, competition? He didn't even that competition. No, because it's no, like, that's, that, that's his introduction to the world and what better, oh, yeah, pl- you right. know what I mean? Yeah, and not yeah. only that, my theory is when they told him to do the music videos, man, the motherfucking label was like, all right, nigga, just do this, that, and the yeah. third, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I, that's my thought, but it was, it was, few, it was, it was still cool. a few people on with a name for the sale. Yeah, it was still cool to watch, though, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just because they never make hip hop shows or anything like that, you know. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, man. So going forward with the singing thing. So, are, do you think that this is something that you're just gonna pursue and just keep going with? Cause uh, you said I'm you're all six in. Once, in. once I got started, like the reason why I never actually, because when I when I like go to when I start doing something, I'm like I'm all in or like yeah, mm-hmm. everything, mm-hmm. like everything, my head, my bank, <laughs> everything. I'm all in. Do you guys deal with the way people kind of look at what we do, you know, with music and stuff like that? It's not a real job, not a real career, and you can't really succeed and make something of yourself. But at the same time, we'll turn around and turn Beyonce on and start listening to music. It's like you have to start somewhere, you know. Everything yeah, that we listen bro. to and everything that we look up to or anything that we admire, bro, somebody had to start. You yeah, know, from started somewhere. from somewhere, yeah. So does that ever get to you, though, when people put, uh, you know, I mean, hey, man, you can know, bro, like blah, blah, this. Like what are the pressures from the outside world that you guys have to deal with, and how do you deal with that shit for people watching? Because a lot of people would like to hear mm-hmm. this shit. For me, so I just I, I just turned twenty three, so I'm not really like that at all. Yeah, and like okay. so I mean, even like since I started, like I haven't like really like been like, damn, like when my like numbers go like start like rising. I mean, I'm not honestly when I be like saying like my numbers, I'm still not really happy with it. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. like I think a moment to where like uh, when I'm like, damn, like I can really do this shit for the rest of my life. Like I, when I dropped my EP and I did like forty k on like the first week, I was like, damn, That's this shit crazy. Good. So I'm yeah. like, all right. I can get used to this, but I mean, I don't really feel like my family. They all support it. Like you, go, you, you gonna make this happen. Like yeah, yeah you good. Mm-hmm. Which is what you really need. How about yourself? So, sure. I mean, I'm 27. My family still support me. Mm-hmm. So yeah. like, I don't really think of it too much. Mm-hmm. But if people got people in their ears with that, just drown it out. Mm-hmm. If you're in love with what you're doing, why listen to somebody else? Man, you have a. I can tell by both of you guys. You guys have a very different energy, a very positive, but very determined energy. I'm feeling from you guys. Like you guys are not ones to really sit around and talk too much about shit, right? You guys just kind of seem like you guys are doers. Cause that's the happened, vibe I'm kind of getting. Like so you, if somebody asks you a question, you are gonna answer. But I feel like you guys just really just get right to it and just put shit out and do your thing. No doubt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, 20, okay. That's gonna happen, man. I feel Word. like personally, I feel like I've been putting the tail. I've been like, like, like holding the tail for making things happen right now. Mm-hmm. But like, what's making you stop it then? What's man, making what's, what's holding back? I'm under, you know, like different. I'm uh, right now. My job is not gonna allow me to like, okay. do what I need to do. I hear you. So the, after like after these these next six months up, mm-hmm. it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It's gonna be treacherous mm-hmm. out here. Crazy. And y'all both ridiculously young. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. For the, the, the type of music, the out the output that you're putting it out, mm-hmm. like yeah. 27, 20, 23. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a good year for you next year. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure, appreciate that. What's the report recording process for you guys? Like, um, we'll, we'll do one at a time. Just as far as like, do you scout the beats out first? You already have some bars in your phone. You thought were dope. Mm. Do you link up with a couple people you know that you know get you get good vibes from? You just create right there. Like, how do you do it? I mean, we we different, man. I okay. I don't write. You don't write just all off the top. Yeah, I just need I just need a beat. Okay, mm-hmm. so do you do it like line by line, or are you just going in there and just not line by line, of course. Okay, word. Yeah. But that takes a very special talent, especially to remember exactly what you did eight bars ago, mm-hmm. and the Tie delivery, and in, keeping yeah. the delivery. How am I going to deliver this? Yeah. All that in your head is a, is a talent. Did you something? How did you get into that? Oh, um, just listening to interviews and stuff. Okay, like listening to Wayne and um, mm-hmm. Future. Did you yeah. ever write shit ever? When I was younger. When you were younger, okay. When I was when I was, when I used to go through. When I used to think I was going through stuff, I used to write. <laughs> but I stopped going through a lot of stuff, and it just it came freely, and I just started making more happy music and stuff. So okay, 
I mean, hey, the music that you make is sometimes a reflection of how you feel. Actually, most of the time it is subconsciously. Yeah. We don't realize the shit we be talking about. Mm -hmm. When you listen back, it's just like, oh shit, you know, I might have been feeling the way that day. The delivery on this is a little, eh. you feel me? Yeah. How about you, bro? For me, uh, I can I be, I drink and sip a little bit, you know. Okay. And then what's the I, drink of choice? My, put that out there, like if you want to put that some crown. Yeah, crown. Straight I, I up. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's great. I drink it straight. Then I just kind of like start Dang, recording. No I write chasing. a little bit. Straight, no chasing. Yeah, I write a little bit, and then when I get in the studio, like especially if it's something personal, like if I write about something personal, mm -hmm. stuff will start coming out. Like it'll start coming out it's by itself. Out. Yeah. So like, and one of my songs, I was like, ah, uh, yeah, but it was like just happening <laughs> naturally. But it just sounded good. So I'm like, nah, it keep it in good. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's something that kind of come out by itself sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, but I, I try to write though, just so I can like get my full story across. Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys got any like studio do's and don'ts for people? Like, if there's anybody in the studio with you. Uh, when I first started, it, people used to be in my sessions, but like now nah, it's just me. It's just, it's just you. Me and it's just you and the engineer. How about yeah, you sometimes I tell him he can like I tell him to pull up, Slide but like, sometimes it's me. Up. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, you cool. got a lot of people that like to have a hell of motherfuckers in there yeah, just doing all type of shit. You never, you're not <laughs> one of those. I gotta mm -hmm. focus. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, we gotta focus on that shit for sure. That's dope, man. Mm -hmm. Cal, what's what's the process for you, bro? Because I know you have an interesting process as well. It's similar to Kodak. Just kind of like listening to the music and then whatever I've got in my mind and kind of yeah. piece it together. What I, what I like to do sometimes is I just play the beat and I'll just rap, sing, or whatever. Just try to do it all in one take. And then you listen to that like a few days later. Mm -hmm. And you kind of like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you kind of like hear bits and pieces where you, you, you might take that for something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, is there something that uh, Seattle doesn't have that you guys, is, uh, your home, your homeland, man, like where you guys grew up mm -hmm. in stomping grounds? Is there some shit that you missed from over there that you wish the town kind of had? I haven't had good crawfish since I've been here. Sheesh. Yeah, I haven't had good crawfish since I've been here. What's the spot? What's the spot in a. That's, that's just trash. Crawfish oh, corner. Fuck, am I going to bring it up then? Yeah. Crawfish corner. You talking about that? The one on Pacific, is it on Pack Highway? Uh, hey, you oh, hey, I thought you were about to say Pacific. Uh, hey, I thought you were talking about. I forgot, about bro. I don't know. That shit was <laughs> dry. Right. Crawfish. I about to say. It's not Hell, nah. I can't compete though. If you, oh, yeah, you coming from Louisiana, there ain't yeah, no yeah, way that bro. our shit's gonna be. Yeah, it ain't gonna have it out here, bro. What about you, man? I need a Zaxby's. You yeah, need a what? Man, Zaxby's. A Zaxby's. <laughs> I need a damn Zaxby's. It's a what chicken spot. Yeah. It's some Zaxby's? crazy food. The closest thing y'all got down here is like See, that's Zales, how that's how yeah. I can validate what he's saying because I don't know what the fuck that is. That's fucked up, bro. It's only is that only on the East Coast. Or do we have shit here? Nah, it's, it's down the south. south. It's in the south end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Damn. Oh, just in the south, not the south end here. <laughs> hey, come on, bro. Cause you never know. You never know what's in the south end. No. Shit. <laughs> That's funny though. So you got those two spots. Okay, I feel you on that. Yeah. You got, how, what's the last time you guys been back? Shit, I went back like uh, eight months ago. Eight yeah, months. My yeah, my cousin he had a photo shoot, so I went back down there for them. For them. Okay. Yeah, we're down in June. 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 Yeah. So now that you've done all that you've done, you go back. What's the? How are they treating you now, though? Is there a little change or what? It is. It is in a it positive is. way, or is it? How are you feeling the vibes now? I mean, I, I I like it. I'm vibing with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. now, now everybody down I know ain't nothing free. Mm. <laughs> so you have like <laughs> the nothing. favorite people, kind of like, hey, bro, see so you doing your thing in Seattle, like yeah, that kind of shit we, a little bit. Yeah, we gotta link up and. No. Nope. Hey. <laughs> That's fucking. I don't crazy. know what you on. No. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> they on some other stuff back home. Man. I ain't from. It's it's it's, it's friendly out here. Mm -hmm. I can admit that. But back home, back home, I don't know what they on. What type of envious stuff they on? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was gonna cool. bring up the whole Vlad TV shit where uh, Lil Boozy was talking about the hypnotizer it's hatred shit. Is that something that is very prominent in? Because he said in oh, that yeah. region especially. Yeah. yeah and yeah. you know, hearing it from you know the way he was saying it, I'm just like, man. So did you guys endure any of that, or even to the slightest degree? Uh, like it's some man, real Lucy life. We from shit. the same area, so you got like people like, like so I'm, I like I went back home like two months ago. So you okay. like, you got people that like that's there and they see what you doing. And it's something that they wanted to do. So that'd be like you know that'd be showing love still. But when you're around, you can kind of tell like the vibes. Still. Okay, like, I feel you. Like, mm. He just like on, he around just in case you make it. He coming, he sharing just in case like yo like I went to school with him. We cool. Mm. Like, yeah. Bro, it's, it's so weird. I feel like every artist has that artist intuition mm -hmm. to a certain degree. It's a little different than anybody just having intuition based on somebody's character. I just feel like if you're an artist, just because your your passion is so true to you, mm -hmm. that if you feel like if you're going into a situation where somebody might want something or whatever, you can always detect that kind of shit if it's not right. Yeah, but even Most like, of the time on an artist's perspective, in my opinion. But before I started like even like doing like doing music, it was yeah. just like me like not being like in the city no more okay so like i don't like i moved i moved to atlanta they see me so i, I ran track in college so they see me like uh, i'm running I'm, I'm in i'm in school like i'm doing this and you know you like it's not i'm not gonna say like they they stuck but it's like 
he not doing nothing to like make mm-hmm. himself like want to get out. He just kind of like been start doing the same things since we've been doing since we was in high school. Yeah, like, yeah, we just on two different levels now. That's mm-hmm. how it is, man. Yeah. Go two different paths, mm-hmm. bro. You have to accept that shit. You mm-hmm. really going with this, you know? It's a hard road, but when you're dedicated, and I feel like you guys are very dedicated. Oh, yeah, I feel yeah, like you yeah. guys got a lot going on. For people watching for the first time, uh, talk about some of your music, like where to find your stuff, and maybe give them like one or two songs they should check out first from each of you guys. Uh, for me, uh, I'm BC Trey. You can, my, my music on all platforms. All platforms. So I just dropped uh, two videos probably in like the last three weeks. Uh, mm-hmm. Dear First Love and True Story, which cool. are actually my favorite songs. And, you know, yeah, I'm just on all platforms. Just Google it. Dope. Mm-hmm. So, Kodak? <clears throat> Kodak the Great on all platforms. I got about 30,000 videos out. Damn, that's uh, without the K, right? That's Kodak without the K. Without yeah, the there K. you go. Kodak without the K. Yes, Check sir. out that cheat code video. Beautiful women. Beautiful bodies. That shit was going hard. Mm-hmm. Definitely check that one out. A lot of things that happened that shouldn't have happened going on. Just check it out, man. Have I got, fun with it. I got a little cameo in there. He gave my first cameo in that video. That looked like a fun-ass <laughs> video shoot. How long did that take? Do you guys to shoot that all That shit was lit. Was it an eight-hour-type <laughs> joint or like Something a, like that. Okay, we're so drunk. Day. We ain't paying You guys have food and drinks and all the whole nine. <laughs> food, drinks, and things. Yeah, there we go, yeah, bro. My first time walking to the big-ass house like that. I'm like, damn. That's how you got to go. That's how you got to live, man. Food, drinks, and models. Man. And that's nice things. Hey, man, we appreciate you guys coming through. Two talented artists. Definitely check them out on all platforms. You feel me? They got great things coming. And if you watch this interview and you're inspired, man, definitely hit him up. He says he checks all the DMs. You feel me? So, you know <laughs> what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, hey, man, Kodak the Great, BC, BC Trey, mm-hmm. Hip Hop Seattle. Yeah, man, this has been the episode 32. 32. 32. Yeah, episode 32, 32 episode. man. Thank you so much for you guys pulling up. Sure. You made it. Episode 32 be that much more special. Yes, sir. Uh, the town. Looking forward to seeing what other videos y'all drop. I know you keep raising the bar. Mm. Yes, sir. You got that Red A video. Y'all subscribe to Kodak's <laughs> channel so we can get that video ASAP. Yep. Let's get those follow buttons on everything. You feel me? It's your boy, Miss Side Def, Henry 100K. Keon Nadi. And our guest. We out. Hey, man. Appreciate